Welcome to this week's edition of The Bro Show Live. This is episode 42 with returning guests, Can of Kitten and Am I No Till Guy. I'm Skillbo One. The panel's all here. What's happening, Chad? How's it going tonight? Skillbo, we had a, a man of Waddy in the chat. Terrible. I'm sorry about your name. Said, has a Skillbo hit us with the and we are live already. And we're, you got to do it now. You didn't do it. Oh, man. Okay. And we're live. Welcome back to. And we are live. Good there job, you go. dude. Thank you. One more um, time for me and hold the N out way longer. <laughs> for, for the producer. You see, it's the usual chicanery here on the Bro Show. What's happening, guys? Thank you, everyone, for joining us, chat, panel. Um, as always, we are here. Eagle is listening. Thank you for listening, Eagle. You won't be joining us today. Sorry for that. Um, we're going to go around the horn, and first we'll introduce our returning guests, and my no-till guy and Candy Kitten. Hey, everybody. What's up, everyone? Uh, you can find me at uh, and my no-till guy on Instagram. And I'm uh, Candy Kitten on Instagram as well. And thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us. We always enjoy when you guys are here. We can talk about hash stuff a little bit, and uh, as always, I'm sure we'll do that. Uh, Spartan. Fresh off the growing with my fellow grower show. What's up, guys? Happy to be here. I'm Spartan Grown. You know me. Find me on Instagram. I'm not a promoter. <laughs> I suck at it, and I'm too fucking high for this shit. Sunday marathon continues, dude. Spartan Grown on Instagr Instagram.com and Farmers Only. Red Setter, where can everyone find you, dude? going on everyone can find me right here on youtube right here in the michigan bros grow show on sunday nights and on instagram for the most part cheers everybody i got all in the late sesh of course the late sesh the frugal force man i should just start shouting them all out huh i almost forgot i was thinking maybe I'll you do got that. a job to do man got a little pile got a couple different strains here i'm going to i'm probably not going to work through all of it but there's some death star and some rainbow driver and i might mix and match here so cheers everybody cheers canna community and my no-till guy canakin pleasure having you on board again great to see you all thanks red i'll great be disappointed season. if you don't work through all that stuff i'm gonna try i'm gonna do my best here i have a couple king palms i might pack one and canna kate where can everyone find you Hello, you can find me on Instagram at the Can of Kate or here on Sundays. That's about it. Welcome, welcome. What has so, everyone done with their last week, guys? I just want to uh, shout out to you, Sequence. The, the Groskis are, are, didn't let that slip by your little comment there. They already latched onto it. And, and oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> For some reason, they never like cared that I joked about Eagle being on Farmers Only or Tender or something. But if it's you, they're ready. So you better make a profile. That's what they're saying. Spartan's got a line already. <laughs> I'm cracking myself up. So did anyone do anything interesting in their gardens in this last week? I did a bunch of stuff, but I can follow up uh, what people did. We just recently uh, planted some seedlings into our main grow room. Uh, so we got the strawberry guava from Oni Seed. Uh, still kind of searching for good hash strains, like high yielding uh, hash strains. Um, so it's another one on deck. Hopefully this, this turns out good. I don't know about uh, so, the hash, but uh, Spartan and them grew that, and they can talk. He can talk to you about that strain, I'm sure. That's good strain. We're still uh, we still run it right now. Um, it's a nice chunky strain. It's always a good yielder for us, and uh, the smell. I think I can't remember. We had one that was a number one that a lot of the people liked for the first round, but I picked the number two because it was just like the pure smell and it was a shorter plant and i'm the guy in the harvest room so i want shorter plants <laughs> but yeah, i heard uh, it's kind of stretchy yeah I've, I've we popped i think we had the i think it was a five pack so we had five we had five phenos in there anyway and uh they were all tall except for that the one that i liked and it the one that i liked would not only was it the shortest of the the ones but it also uh had way more strawberry and way more of the strawberry flavors and smells on it so um I don't know if that's not the most photogenic either. I haven't found too many documented grows, but the pictures I've seen, it's not, it's not like, Ooh, wow. You know, when you see it, but supposedly it washes pretty well. I, I don't 
I don't know if we've got any up there or not, but uh, if you mid mechanical, we might have a few pictures up of it. I'm not sure, but I I'm know scouting. we've ran it once and we're going to, we've got it a mom and we're going to cut more cuts off of it. So I know we're going to run it again. What's the high like? <sighs> I didn't even smoke it. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. But we're a medic, we're a medic facility, facility. Everything's tracked, man. We couldn't, but now that we're rec, I'm able to be able to get samples. Now we're, we're able to get, uh, they call it quality control, I guess on the rec side. So, uh, I put my quality control hat on. That's what I call it too, Spartan. <laughs> <laughs> we all call it. We uh, we also harvested uh, this banana Joe that uh, Kanakin was growing uh, within the last week or so. Uh, it came out really nice. It's super sticky. Uh, yeah, it's like sticky paper actually. Like our row of beetles were getting stuck in it. And... <laughs> yeah, we had, we had some yeah. bugs getting stuck in some of the buds and shit. Uh, yeah, but it's really exciting actually. The the flavors are really weird. Um, there's two phenos, and um, we're gonna wash them separately. Um, obviously, smoke them separately just to see which one we want to keep. We just unfortunately don't have room for both. Otherwise, <laughs> I wish I could keep both. Honestly, That's the way it always is. As always, you want to keep them all. <laughs> I don't know. I've had some that really, really I couldn't wait to get done because I didn't want to fuck with it ever again. So I got to keep it honest. Are you guys growing that chem again? No, we actually cut it all out. We didn't like it. Yeah, it, it wasn't the best yielder. Um, yeah, I mean, the buds were fat and everything, but yeah, I mean, it, it, that was actually the worst plant sorry. out of all three of them. So it yielded great weight wise, but like for hash, it wasn't uh, it wasn't producing that well. And I'd rather wash less material and get more hash than wash, you know, eight pounds of material and end up with, you know, 200 grams of hash or something like that. Right on, the right flavors on. are okay and the high is okay, but it wasn't spectacular. And quite honestly, we didn't even think twice about cutting it out. So. And it yeah, was pretty okay. big buds for sure. Yeah. There were some like arm size buds. Uh, it did, it did have some really, really fat holes on it, but. Yeah, it just wasn't there for the hash, and that's really what we wanted it for. I've got the uh, sour garlic cookies by Bloom Seed Company. So that's going to be our next attempt at a gassy strain. That is my favorite thing that they grow at Mitten Canico. Really? I actually just planted, or uh, we just took clones of the GG4 from Spartan uh, yeah. to plant in my big pot. So that's my next round is Spartan's GG4. Yeah, she's fucking thing about her is is that she likes to side branch at least for me in my situation side branch a fucking lot so um don't be afraid to trim some of those off and it's just gonna help your buds up top if you do so so i gotta get uh i, I gotta make a trellis for her tent too uh we've got all the stuff laying around i just haven't got to it yet so i gotta do that this week get out there and measure it up and, uh, and build that up too but the gg4 uh, will give you some incentives strains that wants to fall over itself yeah, that, that last setup I had without the scrog, it would be a nightmare with GG4. <laughs> so, do it the right way. Don't be afraid to give her some silica. That'll help. That'll help give her a little bit of, you know, a little bit to be able to hold it. But I always found it, no matter what I could do, I couldn't, the main branches all were fine, but it's just like all those little side branches were just weak as fuck. She had a, uh, a clone of it that she had gotten from Clonify that's based on we harvested it and it was it seems to have been a legit clone you know it, it tastes like it and everything but it was definitely it was very small she grew it out from you know a really short clone and uh it ended up you know maybe a foot high or say 18 inches when she yielded it or whatever but uh it was falling all over the place and i mean for a plant that's only like 16 18 inches high i was like fuck i had i had four <laughs> four yo yo it was like this big four yo-yos I was, I was yeah ridiculous. i was like i was like this is gonna be a nightmare when it's like full size yeah scrog's really the only way to deal with her to, to to not be too much of a pain in the ass yeah we might end up having to have to put like a second layer in or something like a, a non-wire mesh one just a cloth one or something to really kind of prop it up in the end i'm on week six with it right now with the same cut that spartan has that i have to give back to him and i'll tell you it's putting on week weight like it's almost at like week seven week eight right now and i'm just like man it's getting frostier and frostier and i'm so glad that i took the time to really set the scrog over top of that because it's starting to before it was holding it up and now it's kind of you know what i mean like whoo a little bit of weaving baby but it's a it's a great payoff oh, yeah there are many harvests where i'm harvesting a plant that's just laying on scrog just laying on yes. it. <laughs> 
this, this like, what the our, uh, our Kevin, the other Kevin did that in the middle, the one bed just kind of collapsed in the middle. I didn't even notice it. Then we were harvesting it. There were just like branches laying all over each other in the middle. I was like, ah, oh, shit. You know, luckily none of it molded or anything. We got lucky in that regard, but there were some fat holes just laying on each other right there in the center of the uh, bed. It definitely helps with your yield and stuff too, because when your plant is struggling to hold itself up, it's not giving that energy to the bud size, which is really important to note when you're trying to maximize your yields, like some growers are trying to do out there. Yeah, just well, to, yeah, but when they start falling out of the light and stuff like that, you don't yeah. get, you end up with like- Into your dirt. Like <laughs> it, it tastes like shit, you know, and then you have the chance of it molding when it's not getting any airflow and stuff. So yeah, it can be a nightmare if you let it get too out of hand, you know, you got to manage it. I'm not gonna. I'm not too proud to say that I've had uh, scrognut and yo-yos all Me at too. once deployed. <laughs> <The whole spaghetti laughs> just there, yeah. everything. <laughs> Proper can of cookies is like that. You always get the one branch that doesn't make it, right? It's like two inches short of the net, and you really wish it would make it, but you got to yo-yo <laughs> it instead. Plants that grow like that remind me of like dog breeds that have bred and bred so much that they like mostly have breathing problems or you know what I mean like it's such a bulked up plant now that it can't even support itself like you never find Judy Ford growing naturally because it can't just an interesting plant it's, thing it's kind of like it's kind of like those outliers you know the thing the plants that are special the ones that stand way out of uh, among you know most weeds pretty fucking good <laughs> but the ones that are excellent the ones that are great there's always something you know there's always a cost for that you know somewhere it seems like like the OG is like, you got node spacings a mile apart. <laughs> so there's all these little examples, GG4, you got to support the shit out of it. You know, some, some of them, me. some plants are notoriously hard to clone or, you know, and it's hard to get something that checks every box, right? Fast plus yield plus doesn't get PM, you know, or whatever. That you don't mind smoking over and over and over again. You know, that's one of the big things is you can find something that does the trick for a month or two, but are you really going to keep this thing in perpetuity? That's the crazy thing about GG Ford, and it's never gone away, is that it's so good. And the buzz wow. never, you never get tired of it. It never stops working. It reminds me a little bit of that old school herb from like the, the 90s and shit, kind of just a little bit. You know, there's that reminiscent uh, smell and flavor to it. That's what I like about it, you know. So it's, it's kind like, of what it's bred from when you think about it. The Chem Sister and the Chocolate Diesel, and like those are old strains. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a throwback, so that's what I like about it. It's that chem, yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those special ones. It's like, I already had it given away, I think. Yeah, I've got it to both you, Skilbo and uh, Kankin and Mil Michigan Notes. Okay, they both have it, and I was done with it. And then I smoked it again. And, <laughs> and I was like, man, I want that again. <laughs> you got bit by the bug, man. The gorilla's I'm got back, you in its baby. grips. <laughs> I don't know if Michigan will ever stop growing GG4. No, in fact, we are kind of a stereotype for GG4 from like Cali growers. Like, ah, yeah. you're just one of the Michigan, want to grow that GG4, that glue. Yup, we do. Uh, for me, it's one of the best ones for pain. <laughs> for, for me, like that, just the overall body pains, back, shoulder, knee, joints. For me, it, it kind of, it gets me high enough to forget about that shit for a while. And that's fucking awesome. I think for there's me, a lot to, the, oh, sorry. Anxiety fix, um... I know that if I smoke GG4 and I'm having a panic attack or I'm having severe anxiety that day, um, I am going to get relief 100%. I don't care if it's at 7 a.m., which, I mean, it's pretty heavy for a 7 a.m., but I'd still do it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I know for sure I'm going to get relief with GG4, and that is why I'm so grateful to have that cut. You know, you talk about smoking early, heavy stuff at 7 a.m. I want to give a shout out to all my 2020 grow off smokers in the morning that we'd be having those early morning, three, four, five a.m. chats and smoke offs. Yeah. Dude, they're in there all day and all night. Speaking of chat, I wanted to give a shout out to everybody out there. They've been rolling. I haven't had a good chance to type because I've been rolling up this uh death star fatty my fingers are just really sticky so i'm gonna try to get this off before i mess with my keyboard but big jar grows in chat wanted to know uh since i was trimming i'm actually not trimming i was just chopping up some weed for this doobie but i am always trimming in my 24 7 any tips on someone who uh hasn't trimmed a bud before 
I would say, uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to touch on this, but the one tip that I would give would be to keep your scissors moving and to keep and to rotate your bud uh, amongst the scissors. Instead of chasing your scissors around the bud, just keep the scissors going. I used to work in, <clears throat> I'm going to trail off for a second, but I used to work in uh, like the, the dish uh, department. I used to work back dish sinks. And the one tip that the uh, trainer always told me was to, always hold on to that handle and never let it go and always keep it spraying and you'll work through it a lot faster. And I kind of took that same approach to trimming. I just keep the scissors moving and then I bring the bud to it. <clears throat> That's one kind of tip I would bring. And always I'm keep your scissors clean too. I'm going to follow it with this. Take your time. Just take your fan leaves off first. And if it depends on what kind of grower you are, if you're one of the ones that wants to trim up when it's wet, at that point, you just want to get in nice and close. Take your time. This isn't a race. I know that it looks like you've got a whole bunch to get done, but we want you to learn how to do this the right way the first time and have really, really smooth smoke at the end. So that's my tip. I'm going to pass it to the next uh, one. Remember that your goals vary a lot, Scobo. Like you trim a lot different than I trim, right? Um, some like if your plant's super frosty maybe you trim off less than you do if it's not as frosty that's me and red red and i are the we right do, they call it that growers trim right and then you definitely want to remember to trim off everything that's brown because it'll taste like shit once it's in your jar so if you get burned leaves from your lights and stuff trim that stuff off i'm telling you that because i failed at this before um you know someone else can mention some things now i'm sure but um, it's important to remember that everyone trims different. You don't always got to try to make it so you're putting it on some Instagram picture or a, <clears throat> a dispensary product page or something. That's how I do it. But <laughs> it, feels, it feels like common sense, but like uh, obviously you want to handle the bud as little as possible. I'm about to smoke this one, so I'm going to handle the fuck out of it. But I don't give it. I can't get the. <laughs> but this is the GG4. You see, I just took all the damn leaves off it, and all I got is bud. I don't know how else to explain it. Yep. Yeah, I love those strings. Hey, don't wet like, trim people. You can, you can like hand trim them literally with no scissors. You just pull a couple leaves off and it looks like perfectly trimmed. And you're like, drop it in the jar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of like this rainbow driver. Kind of kind of able to just kind of flick the, a lot of this. This is untrimmed. So don't think that this is going to go straight in the bag like this. And typically what I would do is I would knock off this bud. I would knock off this bud. I might knock off this bud depending on how long the stem is going to be. And then this top here would be its own. So you're going to get four little buds off of this. We'll call it a top, uh, top cola. And I would just kind of slowly work my way up. Sometimes I'll shave. Sometimes I'll just intricately plick and pluck a leaf. It all depends on the structure of the flower. I like the and, blade flick too. That's a good tip. And you're the artist on this also. So don't, you know, com compare it to somebody else, but take your own approach. The one thing that I had somebody. hurt somebody. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I had some someone give me some weed that was very new at growing, and it was fantastic. Um, I, I, it, like he didn't even know it was good. I, that's it was amazing. It was frosty. It was uh, you know <clears throat> de just delicious and a great high. And he was worried about how he trimmed it. And it was it was more like uh, leafier than you'd think. You, than you normally leave on, but all of it was covered in frost and I wouldn't have ever taken any of that off. So um, it is a personal preference and will be based on like what you're growing and you know how it, how it comes out in the end. Well, so. and also what you're gonna do with it. So you, you hash makers may wanna take all those off and keep those off and do a separate run of just those. That's where I was going to go with it. I was like, because I take, I save all my trim and I'm, I'm using it. I process, actually, I probably eat more weed than I smoke. I don't know. It's pretty close, but, uh, I love. You were eating a cookie when you came into the show. Yeah. I got one more for the, towards the end of the show, just to make sure I'm topped off for bedtime. But, uh, and then I like the Fico also, but you know, now I've lost my train of thought. Too many fucking, too many side fucking meanderings. Well, I think you're just saying that you, you don't mind trimming leaf. it because you use the sugar. Oh leaf. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that just improves my trim in, in my eyes and makes my you know edibles stronger for myself and things like that. So for me, it's like it's a benefit for me to take the extra time to to be meticulous. Whereas in a commercial setting where you're trimming fucking thirty pounds, you're not going to take the time to do that. Well, that's this the way we like to trim over here. Honestly, is why. Uh, you guys got that bud from the new grower is we like to go in there and just take out the sugar leaves and any kind of fan leaves and basically leave everything that's frosty on there. 
because we don't really extract unless we're doing something on the side or whatever. But yeah, we like to leave every little bit on there that's frosty. I was gonna say, I, I normally do all of our trimming and like the way that I like to do it is I like to like take it off the stick first and then I'll do the buds. And for me, like the best way is to just like, kind of like Red said, like keep your scissors in one spot and then turn the bud. That's, that's like sort of, yeah. I agree the same, I do the exact same thing. Uh, the only thing I'll add that I haven't heard yet is a trim bin because yeah, they're expensive, but they pay for themselves in hash. Even if you have to wait six, seven harvests, you know, however long you have to wait, you wait a year. It's a it'd be a nice Christmas treat to get all that dry sift at the at the end of the year. And hell, if you had a press, you could even squish it. But um, you're saving. You're, otherwise, you're not really even saving that. I'm assuming dry trimming. I'm not even going to talk about wet trimming. But what then was all uh, also is like just like what Miss Cantaloupe was talking about was. Um, take them off the stems. And then uh, I hadn't heard anybody mention this either, but the first thing I do is I'll pick it up and um, turn it upside down. So I'm looking at the bud from the bottom up. So, so this is your bud. I'm looking at it from the bottom up like that, because then you can follow the stems and pop out all those big leaves by just popping those stems off instead of even trimming every leaf. You just pop the one stem and you get, you know, all of the leaves attached to that stem. I like to kind of dissect it in there a little bit and that's how it's and usually you take you follow stems you take two stems off you're done a lot of the times um, depending uh, obviously on the strain but i found that's really easy for me was just to follow the stem up you can see the offshoot of the leaf and you can just pop that off um, i see a lot of people will just take a bud from and just do an outside trim while you leave all those they, they're called the crow feet or whatever where it's the little piece of the stem and then like it looks like this much of a <laughs> leaf and uh, th those look terrible. You know, you have to go back through and pop them out. Just do that. Yeah, that's a good example right there. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, this right is my, it's my single largest pet peeve in anything is leaving crow's feet on because they'll absolutely poke through like papers, blunt wraps, anything. They'll fucking stab you in the finger. You can see this is weed that I got from a delivery service. And this is how it was trimmed with this like big fucking gross. I'd be kind of pissy leaf. if I got see, that, that from a that looks trail. like. That looks like this bottom bud down here that's fresh out of the bin, not, not even. Yeah, that looks like say, it. I would question if that was even trimmed at all. Right. I'm right. so trans offended, trans Kate. I almost want you to tell us the name so none of us try them. Went through one of those twists. Uh, I'm gonna call them about it tomorrow, and if they if they don't make it right, I will blast them. There it is. Uh, it that's was incredibly not... cheap, so you get what you pay for. Um, that looks like it was just bucked right off the stick. Like they didn't do anything else. Yeah, that's what I was going to think too. Was yeah, just right off the was, stick. Or I, I would say it had to have been because there's no, I mean, there's sugar leaves on it still. So they like, took we're half of each of those fan leaves off. What's that? Right, we're we're going to get a really good price on this by not paying trimmers. <laughs> we're like just we going to buck weight. it. We got to make weight, guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait. Well, then we got to make weight. <laughs> yeah, weight was up, dude. I don't know. People always should talk to trim bins. Like? I really like the trim bins. Like, or not the trim bins, the trim bags, you know, the shake ones. I don't think that that beats your weed up any more than like your heavy handed dumb friend that doesn't do a great job to basically shake it around in that shit for a minute and then um, pull it out and go through it by hand and do things like cut up crow's feet and pick out a random brown leaf and whatever else. And, Anybody use yeah. that, um, that can of brush? I mean, basically, it's a basting brush. A fucking pastry it. brush. <laughs> Maybe the, the silicone store. pastry brush. Yeah, the silicone pastry bud brush. I, I have not used it. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't look much different than a regular silicone basting brush. I imagine you could experiment with one. I don't. I think the only difference is it costs like twice as much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I do. Every time I've seen one of those getting used, I just imagine it like flinging shit everywhere you mean like dusting trichomes into your face that's what i told yeah. her the first time i see it i'm like why don't you just take a pair of gloves and just, just <laughs> rub your buds with them i mean fuck it so the my first experience trimming i don't know if anyone else has ever had this experience the grower who wanted his stuff trimmed he was all organic and he didn't want scissors touching his weed so that meant hand trim only and we didn't it wasn't like 
boxes of gloves sitting around. So we sat there with bare hands and hand trimmed like plants where I don't know how many plants we sat there and did, but there was a good many, many ounces that we went through. Dude, that's some hand wicked ass like, charas, man. <laughs> dude, I, that's what we ended up doing at the end. Yeah, we smoked a big glob of some charas at the end. It was all nasty skin hash. And yeah, you know dude. what? It was uh, some good weed at the time. I actually have some a couple seeds out of it. I love my hash to be at least a 30-70 ratio of skin to hash. I will still smoke. No more, no less. Just saying, Red, you got yeah, no more. Just like my cocoa, I like my hash. Spurt, what'd you say, man? I, I said, I'd just say, I would still smoke it to this day. I would still do. If I, I, to this day, if I go in there and I didn't put my gloves on and I'm like leaf stripping or something, I'll fucking do this shit at the end. And I'll fucking, if I get a little ball, I'm smoking that shit. It's going in the yeah, I like to eat that stuff. That stuff goes on the teeth or in the beard. Yeah, That's man. It's the, the it's the peppery one on the teeth, right? I'm with you. Yeah. And it also works great for nice, like, I don't know if it's what, what works better if it's the, uh, the, the resin on the beard is great for the skin and beard, or if the oils on the beard is good to help get the resin off the finger. I don't know. It's a win-win, but either way, I like it. It's a win-win. Yeah, we're I want to shout out to chat. Uh, what was it? Aldridge said they're commenting on the uh, cheetah behind <laughs> Michigan no tail at Connecticut, and they said uh, cheetah, cheetah King will be the next show. <laughs> we're getting lots of cat questions. I was just gonna say, you guys need to come on dressed like Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic next time. <laughs> I thought about wearing my leopard hoodie, but we should wait a minute. Wait a minute. That doesn't oh, bode well for MI No Till guy at all. Wait a minute. Hold on. MI No Till guy has to wear the, the like collar and rest in peace, dude. <laughs> like, like rip in peace. Uh, no, nah, I'll dress up as the new husband, the the rich guy. <laughs> oh, there you go. In their wedding photos, though, she had him on a leash. Oh, really? I, didn't, I don't remember yeah, that. Yeah, the new husband definitely was on all fours with the leash around his neck. Yeah. In yeah, pictures. Kinky. I mean... In the interviews, too. Loin yeah. cloth on, so... I'm still all for this idea. If you guys you need a cameraman... It's going to have to be a little role reversal or something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Turn about his fair play, you know? Yeah. I don't Sequence think. always said he'll try anything twice. That's right. She does have like a uh, one of those grassroots like leopard print uh, joggers. So I got that before the show too, and now it's kind of like uh, the modern. Uh, what's that show with the uh, Peggy Bundy? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, ma- a modern Peggy Bundy outfit. Now you can't wear it anymore. Oh, I'm still wearing it. <laughs> it's just dirty right now. It's just the updated like velour tracksuit. You know what I mean? You have seen or like it, the you? juicy and the BB. <laughs> from like 15 years ago it's just a new version of that i have seen it though i like it i would wear it i love it this shit looks so comfortable i'd wear it it is actually really comfortable it's great i mean grassroots uh are fantastic but it's good quarantine clothes. great quality good quarantine <laughs> clothes i like going to get the mail in it you know all these conservative folks around here <laughs> I did have one more thing to circle back um, before we jump too far off of the trimming thing uh, and went down another hole was circle back to what Scobo was saying about taking your time. There are, a lot, and then we were also talking about the crow's feet and getting them little stemmers and things. Now the visual aids definitely got to trim up that stuff, but sometimes if the buds are a little airy to it and you want to leave it on a larger side and you clip one of those crow's feet and then you expose like this huge chunk of stem and otherwise like nothing you were like damn if i would have just left that there that was a nice bud but now you just made three buds so that's why i also like to say definitely take your time i'm going to follow that up with scobo because that's what you can make happen and then you waste a lot of like i don't know yield that way because now you're tossing extra stem that otherwise would have actually been good product you know things like that so talking on the grower side for you i just tossed that in my pile of shit to smoke that day exactly ends up turning to the barfy leafers what's your guys' feelings on like the actual shaving of the bud i know like we all we've all been to a provisioning center or dispensary where everything's got to have that same uniform shape i've always felt like that's kind of why we trim the way we do is like i think any kind of contact on those precious trichomes is our oxidizing them damaging them you're already degrading your quality so much like 
you need minimal contact with that damn bud before it goes in the jar before it's used as medicine. Typically, so, with what you're seeing on that uniform bud, is you're seeing machine trim bud and not hand trim bud. They can't give the care to the specific flower or the you know the shape of the flower, the variance of the shape, you know, and that's why all the machine trim strains look the same. So there's no difference between a machine trim GG4 and Girl Scout cookies versus right. when you actually hand trim it, you see a difference. But it's again, let's go back to usage. And if we say that I am the guy that does it myself, maybe a spin trimmer isn't a bad thing if I become a really good grower and I have a really big harvest, or maybe some outdoor or something. Just remember that all of the good bits that get collected on the bottom of the trimmer was all supposed to be on your plant and your bud. So it's cool if you're doing it for yourself. It's not cool if you're vending that and then keeping all the good bits, so to say. Well, and a spin trimmer is a big difference from what, you know, a commercial trimmer would be using, a commercial grower would be using. The biggest there problem is with like a, spin trimmers and stuff oh, is that they beat up the trim so bad, you can't even make hash with it after it's done. I mean, it, it just makes like the, mo the worst, like most particulate laden, shitty ass hash. So it's like, it really just destroys everything. It destroys the bud. It destroys the- So garbage the in, garbage out. It just fucks everything up. There is like many, many, I'm sure so many techniques I could, but there's like a technique to where you, you're basically shaving the bud with the scissors. It's definitely possible <clears throat> on a hand trim side to, to make it look like a marble or so if you want to. But that's something that I guess, depending on the size of the flower or how fast I'm, you, I, me personally, I'm trying to run through and just try to get rid of like a lot of the bullshit bottom and stuff like that. I will find myself doing the, uh, well, a, a clip, clip, snip, you know, uh, a crow's foot in two and then kind of right up. And I mean, if the foxtails are because of stress or something like that, I like to kind of get them off of there anyways and maybe round out the flower. So I will find myself like shaving the, I don't want to call it shaving because I'm not shaving it. I'm giving it, but you know, my scissors are going really fast and they're not stopping like we were talking about earlier. Sculpting. Sculpting basically. Yeah. But I'll take off some of those foxtails. And what I find is in also kind of scraping the scissors. I don't want to call it scraping either. But it's more like sliding or you have that just slight, slight um, surface area that's being touched a little bit of friction. And you're like almost opening up the flavonoids and you're making it, you're boosting the smell that's another one of the reasons like I like to like trim as close to uh, uh, patients orders as possible is to kind of keep it fresh and keep it the flavors opened up because right when you're trimming it, you're opening everything up, you know, it's, I don't know, something just kind of popped into my head, I guess. The C3000, best trimmer in the game. You know, one of the things that, um, that I found when I was trimming was my hands hurt so bad after trimming with the spring loaded or the I don't, I don't know if it's called spring loaded but the spring the spring typical um, trimmers like your typical, typical fiskers yeah. and um while i love the you know the fisker blades and everything like that you know i asked you guys in chat that you know, and re you guys recommended a couple different brands i ended up picking up one similar just because that's what they had at the store uh and I think their wow. fiskers are just a different style they're like the round uh handle ones with no no spring in them it it is made I mean, a significant difference. Like my hands don't feel like they're going to fall off at the end of the, you know, a couple of plants and things like that. So if anybody has like bad hands or, you know, joint pain, I would definitely recommend using non-spring trimmers. I think the brand that was uh, agreed upon before was Chikamasa was the one that you guys had talked about, right? Yeah, so I got to shout sequence out on that one because his advice and... And I, I got to say, I can I can roll through the weight now and keep up without the carpal tunnel kicking in. It's not bad, man, because I mean, before I couldn't get through a few ounces without my hand cramp. I mean, hand cramping up to the point where you don't want to you can't finish the job. You know, that's my I had the same issues. Not being able to trim or something. Yeah, I had the same issue. And that's how I came across the same scissors. Everyone was suggesting them. And I was like, OK, maybe that'll be a little bit better than fighting, the, you know, the spring all the time. I was skeptical because, you know, it seems like more work or whatever, but I use, I have three pair now that I just switch every couple minutes while I'm trimming and, you know, you never have to clean them or anything like that. So the only downside with the pair that I personally purchased was that 
the blade is not as long as like a pair of Fiskars. So like if you are the type of trimmer that uses the side of your blade, you don't get as much surface area. But I think they have a couple different, <clears throat> excuse me, I think they have a couple different models without the spring. Chikamasi, I, that is. I had, I find that same exact thing. In fact, I was kind of getting annoyed at them the other day, but I was like, my hand pain not being there is way, you know, way better. Um, but I, I used to use these curved blade Fiskars and I love the blade on those. Right here. Yeah, the curved ones. Yeah. Yep. yep. Do you have them without the spring? Oh, I've get, got the spring ones. You can get yeah. curved chinkamasas, but they're pretty That's expensive. That's what I have, and they're awesome. The curved chinkamasas are great. There's they're a so new great. There's a new company that I've seen on Instagram. I think it's called Diamond Something. Has anybody seen those? Uh, not brand? Diamond Cut. Diamond Cut. Uh, they're a pretty old company, but uh, they're still badass. Eagle uses them all uses them all the time, and they have all different types. But they do have yeah. There was like four or five else, different but... styles. Yep. They're not that much more expensive either. I've been um, eyeballing a pair of the uh, kind of fancier silver ones, you know, just to treat myself. But that's the one I was looking at too. I, I want okay. One. They're a right. little. They, my worry is that they might be a little heavier than that I would like. Um, you know, just the fatigue of my hand, but. Uh, I mean, I could just switch back to the other scissors then, I guess. But. I think of it like this as a cook, a professional cook. I'm all about my blade. I keep it sharp. I, You know what I mean? So it pays for me to buy a good chef's blade because I use it all day long. Amen. And hopefully you will get to the point as a grower where you will say, you know what? It's $65 for these versus $38 but these blades are going to last me for years. I'm not going to have to fuck around sharpening them. They're going to really, really benefit me in the long run. We're talking about pennies, man. Just treat yourself and buy the good ones right out of the gates. Don't keep buying the $14 ones. I know it's tempting. Just stop it. The extra $10 makes a huge difference in the scissor game for sure. The thing that somebody has a pair of those, like I'm, I'm really, I've always been super curious on them. They, they've been around long enough to where if it wasn't a legit product, somebody would have done called it out. Eagles uses them, I know, because I was talking to him about it when I was on live, on one of his lives. But um, yeah, it's just for me, it's one of those things when I have to order something online, that's a pain in the ass for me. So I'm gonna have to like set aside time for me to fucking figure the bullshit out and set up a fucking account on their page to order their stupid crap. You know, if it was a store I could walk into and get it from the grocery store, I'd have it tomorrow. So it's one of those things for me. I guess I'm just old school in that way. <laughs> Dude, that's the same reason I haven't tried out that company either because I thought they were pretty cool. A long time ago, I was like, oh, dang, man, I'm going to get myself a pair of gold scissors and fall out, you know? It's just, it's not real gold or anything. It's just cool. <clears throat> give my buddy a pair or something like that what i really think is cool is because i snip my scissors i snip my weed up as they have that pair with the rounded tips it's not actually like uh snip your skin off tip it's they're rounded and they're kind of i'm not really sure what they're using like children's maybe. safety scissors red yeah they're like maybe for working around stem on the inner plant i don't know but yeah they almost have like a like a guard on the tip of it and it's I was almost thinking that'd be perfect for uh, chopping up weed. Maybe that's what they're for. Maybe they're for chopping up weed. Uh, hand chopping. Weed. Good for cloning, so you don't like slice your your freaking hand right here. You know. And maybe that, yeah, what, right here. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. I nicked that a couple times. I was just about to say I've definitely cut my fingers before trimming. The webbing is the worst. Yeah. You get a brand new pair of scissors and just don't go even close to those suckers, man. It'll perk you right up. You're like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> got myself one thing i like to do when i'm trimming is have like six pairs of scissors at once and then when you like get to a point where they're like sticky i just scrape them with a razor blade into a little smoke pile and then stick them in like a sponge soaked with iso and then by the time you get back to that pair they're clean you don't ever have to like sit there and fucking clean scissors because i hate that shit and when I first started growing, I only grew GG4. So I only trimmed GG4. So it was like, you had scissors for two minutes. You know what I mean? And then it was like, you couldn't anymore. So that's like a easy way to cut a bunch of time cleaning scissors and shit, just to get a bunch of pairs of them, buy them once. You know what I mean? I know they're expensive, but fucking take care of them. And then they last a super long time. And then ISO soaks on the entire time you're trimming. So you don't ever have to clean them. And well, another advantage to having a lot of pairs of scissors is that when you have your friends come over, you can make them trim with you. 
I have three for that reason. I know Sequence saw, I don't know if he remembers or if you noticed, but when we all trimmed over at Old Man Hermit Hashes, I brought by like basically my trim, I don't know, bucket basket or whatever. Yeah, it's like a paint caddy or something. Yeah, it's like a little caddy and it had uh, actually a couple ball jar, like pint ball jars, wide mouth pint jars with about half full of ISO. They have about, they'll hold, they'll easily hold four pairs of scissors. Martin's got a nice caddy too. Oh, there you go, right there. Yep, oh, you look like you, you made that sucker. Did you make that sucker? Shop class? My, my son did. He made oh, that's it. That's awesome. <laughs> that's very cool. Yeah, see, so get yourself like a little trim caddy or something. And uh, a wide mouth ball jar will hold four pairs of scissors almost perfectly if you want to keep a few pairs soaked. And the reason I say keep keep a few pairs soaked, and then I like the idea that Kate had with that sponge, because I actually purchased a little item. It's called a scissor scrubber, fancy name. Um, you know, it's a little piece of plastic and it's got some scrub brush, toothbrush blades inside, but I mean, sponge and <clears throat> maybe like a shot glass or a sponge and a, a, a film container pill bottle or something would probably be awesome. I, I might do that next time. I need a fresh one, but I keep some alcohol in that sucker. Everything stays soaked. And then when I need to scrub, I scrub and then I wipe clean. But yeah, I like, I like that because if, if you don't keep them clean and you're just scraping them with something or you're going to wear down that edge and that edge is something that's really important when we're talking about trimming. And that's like basically why I'm blabbing is because I want to get to the talk about the edge, unless you get like a, a specialty sharpener or something, or you know how to sharpen scissor blades, or you take them to somebody who sharpens scissor blades, you're going to have to buy a new pair of scissors pretty often because you're cutting through stem, you're cutting through biomass and you'll recognize the difference between an old pair of, of trimmers and a new pair of trimmers real fast. I just had a That's thing awesome. I want to remember it to cover it. If I don't say it now, I'll forget. If you happen to be one of those growers that takes the whole plant at once right at the base and takes it up out of the garden to hang, you should look into getting a PVC cutter, the ratcheting kind that clicks so that you can cut right through that at the bottom. And I want to give for Groly a shout out for that because I think he's the one that I learned that from a long time ago from one of his videos. I always take my old trimmers. Um, I use them in the garden outside or, you know, I have I have pretty much like a pair of scissors or trimmers somewhere in, in the house. And like, if you go upstairs, there's trimmers. If you go down in the garage, there's trimmers, you know, if you go in the kitchen, there's probably trimmers. They're, you could use them for a lot of things. So you know, you don't have to throw them away when you're done with them, but they do get, they definitely do get um, beat after a while, like Red was saying. It's funny you bring that up. I actually have like an order of operations. Yeah, it goes from the trim bin or like, you know, trimming the, st the stash. Then it goes to like trimming bulk um, fan leaves and stuff like that. Then it probably goes outside to the outdoor garden. Yep, there's like a total order of operations. I like that. Recycle. Oh, I like that order of operations. I'm going to have to remember that. Like, I, I was just willy nilly. Like, here, just throw that's some That's called the, it's very professional. Uh, that's, that's the algebraic approach to trimming. <laughs> so we had a we had a question about a smell proof like lockbox and uh we got go ahead tell them about see uh, i was saying i don't know if it's gonna like show it with our background but i have a skunk bag is what i use for um like my on the go kind of stuff so it's smell proof and it has a lock you can hold a fair amount and skunk bag makes like a bunch of different sizes of bags and like backpacks and um, I believe most of them have locks on them. Does anybody else use like a smell proof bag? Sometimes like when I'm, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I have 10, I have 10 of them. I have one for pipes. I have, well, Do you even know what the brands are though? Like on the... uh, yeah, I have, a, well, I guess I'm not off the top of my head, but <laughs> I do use them. I didn't know we'd be asked about it, but yeah, I can grab it. Pop go quiz. Oh, I'm going to go get it. Hang on. I just put everything in mason jars. So like I have all of my strains are in mason jars and then I keep them in my bag and then my bag itself doesn't smell as long as I don't put any loose bags in there. It's okay. If you put any sandwich bags in there, it's going to smell. Yeah. I was going to say glass is usually a real safe option. And you know, if you're really worried about it stinking, wipe it off with some ISO or something and really make sure that the outside of the glass is cleaned off also. But yeah, there's this company called Smelly Proof Bag that I used for a really long time and they made black bags, which was really nice. And you could uh, heat seal them and, 
you know, if you were going into a festival or something and they were digging through your, your bag, they can't really open up your sealed, sealed bag and you can't see through it. So that was always a good option there. And uh, there was, uh, I'm curious if anybody has ever used, because I'm, I'm interested in getting them. They have some pretty nice looking products and they're claimed to be smell proof, possibly uh, carbon fabric, things like that. Revelry Supply, I think is, is the company's name. Oddly so. enough, that is the bag we have. We just checked. That's it. <laughs> oh, okay. So how, how, how's the quality and how is the, uh, how's it work? It's how's a, it? super nice. As far as like the quality of the like build of it, it is, it's a really like thick material. It's really uh, uh, stiff, uh, very so solid So probably bag. is a carbon. They, they claim to like have it be stitched with like carbon or something. So. I think the word would be carbon. rugged. The fabric is really nice rugged. inside. Um, I wasn't yeah. kidding when I said I have a lot of cases. Yeah, you go snowboarding, you know, you got to have the Burton cases. Ugh. We have our peak case. We have joint cases. But yeah, the fabric inside more cases. I dig the pattern. That's pretty cool. I'm just waiting for her to say, oh my God, I didn't know we know that was in here. A little that's sore wind. Right. The gray yeah, right. There. Seriously, this is like an awesome stash of hash or something. And that's like a really that. nice bag. It is really nice. So that's rubber. Okay. I was just, right. you yeah. just thinking of that like, brand. Yeah. What's the, the retail like, on that? areas and stuff have like flaps over them to keep the smell from like leaking out of the zippers and everything. They're not uh, cheap. It's, it's pretty nice. These. Pretty nice. Oh, they're pricey but they don't as long as you take care of them they're not going to go back because i'm pretty sure they're going to use a similar technology there as a skunk bag and you throw those in the dryer for 30 minutes and it recharges the i think they use some kind of charcoal or something all right hit me with the sticker shack how much does that bag cost for 80 bucks it had to be under 100 you know what? Sure. It, honestly it was a like impulse purchase at the hydro store i, I totally would have done it too oh, man so it's, it's like, been like plus 20 percent so honestly, we were getting CO2 tanks and like she was like going up and down the aisle. She's like, oh, we need a bag. And, well, I wanted something that would hold both <laughs> of our space cases, which are the biggest space cases and they're pretty much ridiculous. Um, I just wanted to order one of those today. I was looking at those. Those are like 150 like a grinder, bucks. The space case is the one at, because all the other ones I've used have never lasted this long. This but has been years. They're a little spendy, but they stay, they stay sharp for a long time. Easy to clean, man. I also yeah, have just, a, oh, sorry. Alcohol them up a little bit and they're good to go. I think this is it right here, Scobo, for 45 bucks. Yeah, Dang, that's 45 deal. bucks. That's awesome. Put me down once. So that's what I mean. They, yeah, it wasn't it's crazy nice. expensive. Yeah, the, and they got like a nice riot, style to them too. Riot for like little pipes and stuff. Um, Those are the hard ones hard to find. Kind of yeah. Thing, so it's good for like glass or something. If you drop it, it won't that's break. That's great. And then it looks like they have like 35 different kinds of those bags, by the way. Oh, yeah. Revelry.com. I'm super jealous of that bird case. Supply. I looked at those too because I'm an old snowboarder myself and uh, I've seen yeah. that. That's perfect size, man. A little chill them, put that in there. It's, it comes with a bunch of like basically tools for like cleaning out a pipe or, you know, basically on the go smoking tools in it and oh, shit this one too. Has so the plastic thing. And it's you know, it fits perfectly in that inside pocket too, those coats. Oh, yeah. What is one that plastic thing? Is that a toker or is that a charger? It is a toker. That's a, a toker? That's no, it's What's a, that black thing? That black plastic it's like, thing? It, it's a little case for like, uh, you can put your herb in there. It's like a little. Oh, it's another case. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's oh, dope. it's a herb case. Oh, yeah, oh, you that's really your, like, cool. Right. You can hide your weed in there. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> you can hide your weed in there, dude. Yeah. I love it. That's so cool. Yeah, what turned me on to that company is they, they also sell like backpacks and duffel bags, like three different size duffel bags. Bur oh. Burton's great. Um, I, we, like, we like their boards, their clothes their uh you know the riding gear and stuff like that uh and they they you know they make it some of the stuff for burton is actually pretty relatively affordable when you, you know oh, i'm sorry i meant revelry but yeah burton too yeah i always rode burton and you always got you always use burton gear also the duffel bags i actually meant the it looks like you can get sorry. the uh the revelry escort smell odor proof water resistant carbon line backpack is like retailing for 70 with free shipping on ebay which is sweet. that's not pretty bad cool. at all yeah. Eagle said that Mars also sells smell-proof bags, and I looked it up. They do sell them. I couldn't figure out where to buy them from, but they uh, they do. Get out of here, girl. Oh. Hey, holy shit. Look Sticky at the size Mets, of this. I put a link in the chat for the uh, Revelry the, Supply. The duffel bag one is going for forty nine ninety six. Revelry Revelry Overnighter duffel bag odor-absorbing water-resistant with strap. 25 by 13 by 13. That's a beast, man. That's holding bongs and all of the kit. 
Dude, my rainy day money, I want to get, they have a, like, apron. It's like a denim apron. It's got some pockets for your shears and stuff, dude. It's awesome. Like, man, I still want to get, you know, I never really purchased things. If there's any dude that I'd buy an apron for, Red, you'd be the first one, man. Yeah, dude, it's really cool, man. Put the finger up. You need to have patches on it, man. It's got to have, like, American flags and Red Setter Farms and all kinds of It's the chef! You know. It's denim, dude. It could totally take some patches. That's pretty cool. One of those don't trip patches. Yeah, as long as they don't uh, come infested with mites or anything. They're golden in the garden, man. Good. All right, let's look at the grow off plants. It's a good time for that. Here's Forest Bros. I've been enjoying this segment of the show lately. The grow off plants are getting so lush and I love this start part. To put some vigor to them. We should continue this after the grow off and just have a hashtag like Michigan Bros Grow Show or something because oh, I, yeah. I sit here and do this all day. Well, we're working on a website, so hopefully we can do this every week with um, submitting pictures in there too and stuff like that. Here's Narwhal's plants. His plants had some bad fortune, but they're still trucking along. Is that like the beginning of a cover crop I was seeing in the top and the bottom of those pots? I thought I saw something. Yeah, he's got clover in there, it looks like. Oh, yeah, that's like white clover. Yep, cool. Nitrogen fixers. Here's High and Tight. High and Tight won the Discord giveaway, Discord seed giveaway. And was also in the grow off. Here's Abolished Plants. Is that in a four by four right there that we're looking at? It's a five by five. five, by five. Oh, that's, that's I actually huge. just crawled in there today and tried to defoliate some more. I literally like crawled down on the hydrogen. <laughs> oh man, brutal! But there's so many leaves in there right now. There's a lot of leaves in there. It's definitely strong indica for sure. But look at that bush. Nice wide leaves. Getting completely dwarfed, or my one LG in the front right just getting completely dwarfed by uh, 2020's damn monster genetics. Those things are always so vigorous in my garden. Yeah, snow it's that seed vigor, man. It's hard to match. Six You're smiling. Two earth boxes and two homemade earth boxes, it looks like. Smiley's got some clones. See that tray? That I like that tray right there. Uh yeah, if you're using those root rights, it's more spaced out. They're, they're not the, the regular trays that are like more crammed in there. That actually gives you a little bit of space. I like that tray. I just recently switched to one like that. I have that same brand of tray and I have the other kind and I haven't really... I did one round of clones with the new one. Here's working class stoner. Got the cat pictures. Whoa. Look at that job. Look at that. that nice and... All I cleaned up. I would be taking all those out. I'm, I'm not criticizing, but I would be taking all that bullshit out. Fuck that. Too much work. Oops. Skip right, right over. See where that. See where that. Uh, uh, what do you call it? What's the yellow thing called? The yellow card. Uh, sticky trap. That's like the perfect place to hang right there. A lot of people will hang it up really high or you want it just like that right above the soil level that's where you're going to catch those catch those bugs doc's plants are looking happy it looks nice so it just they just look happy yeah although he's trying to report them already what are you doing man i was trying to report <laughs> report tara hater damn <laughs> He's got that old man Hermit Hash uh, tech with the uh, uh, perlite in the trays. It's fuck, I love that. Look at how nice and evenly that's all filled, man. Taking it right to the walls. It's gonna be a nice filled canopy for sure. From the windows to the walls. You see the temp sensor at canopy level? Yes, yeah. sir. I also see the great use of tomato cages inside there like that. These bags. These bags. 
definitely help it blow out, man. It's helped my veg tremendously. Look at those leaves. Mm. Great job, GP. GB's got clones as well. <clears throat> Same clone tray too. Nutrient shootouts. Bushy, all natural. Yeah, look at that, untopped. Reaching for the lights. Like that. Westwood Micro. Got cloning in different media, guys. Rockwell. Rockwell, yeah. <laughs> look how happy and healthy those plants still look, though. That's good. I like that. That's Here's nice. Dro. Dro. Dro Scroggers looked really good for. Did he have here. the easy swaps right in the bed there in that picture? Yeah. yeah. So All he's right. doing a test. He's doing some That's the, that aren't and some that are. He's got the uh, Blue Mots watering system in there. He's got the card down here at soil level. Clone's going there too. On the upside down root riot tech, so they stay in there. You don't need a tray. Genius. <laughs> you know, maybe if anybody from the grow off is in chat, what are some of the features that you notice about the plant? Maybe like rate of growth, like thickness of stalk, like vigor, anything like that. Maybe we'll shout you out. See these great tops right here? Yeah. yeah. Very clean. We got a TikTok video. Tara. It's so loud in my ears. Pick one for the team, oh, baby. I would mute that anyways. You two might get Like a 15 out of 10. <laughs> Turn it up. Got to talk over it so that it scribbles it out. Looking good, Tara. I like those plant risers. Those are nice. We use those at work, too. Ooh, look at that leaf. Man, that's so. that was so loud, guys. There's nutrients plants from a few days ago. Using those Seeing AirPods. slow, slow to veg by AirPods. Dan. Shout out, Dank Man. Instead of using nectar. Everyone's plants are looking really good. Good job, guys. I definitely think so, too. And with that, we have to announce a winner for it. Yeah, the competition this week was to make the judges laugh. Well, the bi-weekly, I should say, not just week. And can we, uh, can we share the post, the winning post real quick? Yeah, I'm looking for it now. Uh, you caught him. You caught him sleeping over there. No, we looked at it already. Oh, it'll be totally worth it. We're going to get some, uh, some, movie, some movie voice from Steelbo here in a minute. Yeah, I gotta find it real quick. I'm scanning. Technical difficulties. <laughs> See Bud's Eye in chat by High and Type 420. Sounds like we got Bud's Eye plants out there growing. <laughs> Bud's Eye. Really okay. Term. That's cool. I found it. I found it. So if you want to bring that up on screen, I can narrate now. So this was the caption that had us laughing here. Day 67. Get your hair did. Some things we are not good at. Never enough, never enough, never enough. So Boomer tapped into the At Michigan Grows Grow Show and 2020 Great Lakes Grow Off Knowledge Grab. And Boomer will roughly quote a few. At Dank Man Dan, cut off anything bigger than two inches. At Sequence, you can go real hard. At Tara Wilson, See, I just cut it all off and my plants look fantastic. Skillbo, you can never go hard enough. Exhales his third of five wake and bake joints spitting knowledge. 
at Abolished Farms, at Smiley's Garden, at Spartan Grown, chime in. Just take off all of the fan leaves and let the beneficial ninja toads help the lateral branching. Red Setter Farm, it will be all right. Just do what you feel is right. Now let's roll a joint. Boomer knows there are more, so a big thanks. Let's see how they look in a week. After this week, they were rode pretty hard. Cheers, GP. So good. That was great. Oh my god. I love the Ninja Toads, man. Fucking love the Ninja Toads. Ninja Toads had me laughing when I initially read it too. That needs to be a shirt ASAP. I need to graph it. 2020 Ninja Toads. So congrats to GB Farms. Uh, thank you for writing that out and giving us all a laugh and uh, giving us the ability to share it here on the show. Yeah, and I just spilled my joint three different times trying to load it up because I'm sitting here laughing so hard. So thank you for that. I don't know how far back everybody's video game history plays have been, but uh, that instantly reminds me of Battletoads, the video game, the Ninja Toads. That's the first thing that popped in my head when he said that, and I just started laughing. I died, dude. That's what I want right there, a a Battletoad with an MBGS uh, hat on. And uh, GB, just hit me up with your address. I know you've won before, but I don't save anybody's information like that. So just hit up my DM and I'll get that right out to you. How responsible of you, Abolish? Quite. I put, up, I put everyone's addresses, post-it notes all over my house. You have like a serial killer wall? No, that's a newspaper. I don't have a newspaper wall, no. Just a post-it note wall. Well, I'm okay with that because I know post-it notes suck and they don't fucking stick for too long. So Yeah, they're, they, I got two, <laughs> two weeks worth of addresses. That's uh, it. You got to have a thumbtack to go with it. And I just want to take a moment to shout out the 144 people that are hanging out, spending their Sunday night with this. I hope y'all are smoking one right along with us. Cheers. Well, so am I no-till guy in Can of Kitten um, filled in what they did last week a little bit. Did anyone else do anything cool? Any garden stuff? I got a new tent and the light from Mars Hydro, so I set that up. And I have a video coming out at some point this week, so thank you to Abolish for putting that together. Um, so that's pretty cool because I've never grown in like a real tent before. I'm pretty excited about that. And I had to ask the chat some pretty fucking stupid questions like, is my light hung up right? And what is this pocket for? So it was kind of, it was fun to put it, put it together. And so somebody out there listening says, well, what is the extra socket for? You can fill them in. The pocket? I don't even remember what the answer was. I think it was for holding stuff. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's all it is. It's the whole shit. I, yeah, I think I'm gonna put a CO2 bag in there. It's funny because you oh, get a tent idea. for camping, and they have like a pocket on the inside, so it's a tent, right? So why not have a pocket on the inside to hold your cell phone and stuff? <laughs> I I put uh, like the like the display for like the what the temperature and humidity and all that shit is. I put those in there. That's all I use it for. Dude, that's the first thing that came to my head as soon as I saw that little pocket because I I, I cracked up. I was like, oh, that's hilarious that it's a tent. It has that side pocket. And then I was like, man, that'd be a perfect spot for like the sensors and things like that if you don't want them like inside your canopy. Red, you can put weed in there. You can put weed in there. I'm always curious about these little stash spots. I'm like, what are these extra little pockets and stash spots? I like them. It's all these little things like, can I keep a poker somewhere? You yeah, put, put a lighter in there, just leave somewhere. an extra lighter in there. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. Kick it with your plant. That's with the lighters, yes. I'm excited I got the uh, Mac one into flower. I have got it plugged into the uh, auto pot system. I've been hand watering, top feeding, and veg, like I do everything. And then in flower, that's where they start getting the bottom feeding. And uh, they're looking the best that they've looked their whole life, so... I'm just leaving them alone and get letting the bottom feed do its thing and uh, hopefully get some, I mean, they're not even two weeks in yet. So, but I'm happy about that. What's your flower time on that, that you're going to take it and you get it from Matt. So, you know, I don't ever, I just, I just, I don't, I keep, <laughs> I can't even talk. I'm too fucking high on this GG4. I got nine plants in that four by four. So, 
it's going to take at least probably nine weeks for all of them to be done. So I have a lot of time to play with it. So I just let them go until they're done. So I don't even ask people. I'll let them I'll run it myself a couple times. And then I ask other people, hey, when do you take it? You know, because environments are different. Uh, the way we feed. I mean, this came from a synthetic situation and I had to baby it back to organics and it's a slow veger anyway so there's a lot of way different factors that the nut whatever number he would give me would really mean nothing i agree with that i just wanted to say that i transplanted your mac one into a one gallon and in my no-to guy in can and i transplanted that drop cookies cut into a one gallon at the same time and both plants are the same height so they're in a race and veg to see who gets there first I'm going to vote on the Tropicana. I'm going to get there first. <laughs> we just uh, made some Tropicana hash or Tropicana cookies hash, which is oh, the, the Tropicana cookies not, so not good, a fast veggie either, though. To be honest, there <laughs> it doesn't seem like I got them both the same day. They were roughly the same size, and they're still roughly the same size. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't very fast. Uh, even with the CO two cranked up and stuff, I was like, wow, this thing's taking a while. I think I even commented when I posted about it when, I, when we were growing it. They're still roughly the same size. <laughs> what about uh, they are, you flour? What's the, does it not stretch much either in flour, or is it was it a stretcher? Um, the cut that I kept, the clone doesn't stretch. As, the, like when it was from seed, it, it had a little more, like obviously a little more stretch to it. But the second time I ran it, it wasn't too bad, actually. I think uh, – um, maybe two, a little more than two times stretch, you know, I got about twice as big, but maybe, maybe slightly larger, but not like a, you know, like a three times or anything like that. I like that. Well, so what'd you guys think of that mycelial web that I shared today in a chat connecting the two pots? Wasn't that wild? Looked like the damn spider queen's nest or something. Yeah, it was fucking crazy. It almost looked like fake skin. You know what I mean? Like when you're pulling skin, you know? I've seen that roots do it before, but I've never seen something like that. I saw it at first and I was like, oh, is this, is this good or is this bad white stuff? <laughs> <laughs> You're showing off there, Red. Showing off his trim job. Uh yeah. Yeah, the trim job. No, this is uh some more untrimmed Death Star right here. Uh Scroggy McScrogginson four in chat was asking what I had in the bat over here. This doobie here. So I was trying to show him what some of the Death Star look like. Maybe I can oh there I can get a little closer. Is that indoor red? This is indoor. This is looks really dense. indoor. I'm curious how your Death Star compares to my Death Star. I am too, especially you know, because we have completely different lighting. You know, Red Shredder in chat's got a really good question. He wants to know why that's not purple. Uh, I think I. That's have, a good point, Red. Is there? Oh, is it because? Uh, You're growing green stuff because now. Because I'm growing green stuff. It's because of your affinity. Well, I was info. also thinking that there might be a purple pheno, so I don't know. I'm taking that question two ways. See, is red. Yeah, it was too broad. Up. I had to like narrow it down real quick, otherwise we would have gotten lost in the weeds. But I do have only like actually the rainbow driver doesn't go purple either; it fades yellow. Um, I don't have many. There's not many, but there are a couple. Those are my daytimes. It's funny because you know the purple I don't really smoke. I really don't believe it or not. I like to smoke the greens. Uh, I like to grow the purple. I like to smell the purple. I like to eat the purple. I'm not a big fan of uh, sometimes smoking it. Sometimes late at night, but I only sleep once during the day, so I only smoke once before bed, but smoke a lot more during the day. So, You like the band Deep Purple? Deep Purple. Dun, dun, dun. I like Purple Rain. Smoke on the purple water. Thick. Fuck, here we go on that purple bic again. Purple bic, dude. Baby, come back. I'm bringing it back. If I knew how to make hash back in the day and I made some hash from that plant, that would have been so good. I'm sure I took it like three weeks early, probably four weeks early. It was so good, man. It was some of the, it was my first like real, real plant. That's why I'm talking about it. Like it was so good, but yeah. You all loved your first early premature plant. 
I know you all did. It was better than anything that I was be able to get my hands on without it. Damn straight. Like my first grow, I want to say, or my second grow, the premature bud was definitely better than the finished bud because by the time it had finished, the spider mites had taken over. But the premature <laughs> bud was still pretty decent. Spider mite turps, baby. I just wanted to quickly show, this is uh, the greenhouse that I put up last week because I wanted to talk about the veg tent that I put up to house the plants to go in the greenhouse. So this greenhouse is 30 by 40 by 16 feet. And these are all two inch galvanized steel poles. So we're doing the other stuff like um, putting in all of the uh, straight bracing and then framing in the sidewalls and stuff next week. How many rows are you gonna be doing in there? I'm assuming, what do you mean? I'm assuming you're just going to have straight rows of beds for it to grow in, or no? We're looking at 65-gallon pots. Oh, you're doing pots for every plant? Yeah. Because I look, I was comparing beds. So, like, a 4 by 8 bed holds 350 gallons of soil, and then pots are 60 gallons, roughly, I figured, depending on how many you get. But yeah, I figure you just do a custom pot that just goes the full length. You know what I mean? Well, you would, yeah. But I was just comparing like the volume per area of where you would have plants. So oh, if you're I making like a row. Of soil is what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yeah. So I was comparing basically the soil costs and uh, decided to go with pots at that point. But I definitely heavily considered the the beds. And that what's your good. medium going to be? And you're still going to use like uh, cocoa pro mix? Or are you going to go build your own soil. organic soil? No, it's no. going to be a commercially available soil, I think. Yeah. Because mixing thinking. that much soil, you're going to need to rent a cement mixer or something like that. Always check Craigslist. Sometimes you can find somebody that's getting a divorce, his wife that's really, really pissed off, and she might let it go for 50, 75 bucks. <laughs> I guess I got to ask, is the plan to turn and burn the soil, or are you going to plan Open to, to reuse it. Reuse it? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. No reason not to. Once you put all that money into it, just keep running that bitch and... Well, I know all you smart testing. guys I can ask questions and be like, hey, what should I pour on this? Like, you what kind of cow mag do I put on here to make this one better, boys? First thing you do is you get that test that Spartan Ground has always told us about for that soil. Yeah, you're going to turn that different realm. Yeah, you get your soil to, it, it all depends on how you're going to ultimately feed your plants. If, you, if it's all going to be a pure organic, then soil tests don't tell us a lot. <laughs> you need to get, they do make a living soil kind of a test, but still it's questionable what it tells you but at least it can tell you mineral content like what's there so yeah, or what might be might need to be what might be with. Deficient. yeah yeah i definitely have a lot to learn in that route avenue and i'm uh, excited to do it for sure uh someone asked if we're gonna line the pots and rows and it, yeah um you want to be able to get around the plants and we have a lot of space so we should be able to spread them out a decent bit And you got a, a sand base? Oh, yeah. There's a sand uh, that was laser, laser leveled. We had to rent a bobcat and do all that stuff. And then um, we're putting down landscaping fabric and then maybe landscaping tile. But um, that should be a pretty good foundation for, for what we're doing this year. I was just going to say that's good. You had some kind of barrier there because otherwise the roots could go right through the pot and start fucking with the foundation. <laughs> you know, it was just blast right through. Yeah, the sand is three inches thick. That's going to be multi-strain out there? Or are you going to just... Yeah, leave? so I, I have actually taken most of the clones or all of the clones already. And it's all the stuff that I have already. So like the Crescendo and the Central Blue. Um, I might run some Sour Melon and some Death Star and stuff like that out there. I can't imagine trimming even bigger plants of sour melon, though. Are you going to be able to throw any more OKC that. out there? Uh, yeah, I do have OKC clones. And I've been really, really impressed with that. Like I showed the plant, the grow off uh, chat gets kind of their own pictures a lot of times. And they got their own pictures of the OKC today. And it's really frosty and it's stacking like really good colas. So I'm excited to see what it does. Especially in the greenhouse. When do you think you'll be operational by? Like, when can you throw pots in there? Uh, the sooner the better. 
I'm hoping before the end of the month. Um, that would be the best because ideally outdoors, you'd put them out in the middle of this month or early June anyways. So I think the greenhouse extends the season both ways a little bit. As long as your plants are not of the maturity, they're going to flip to flower right away. You can take advantage of it a little bit and uh, start your season a little bit earlier. Is, so your, uh, is your plan to, to do a full length grow or are you doing light dub? We're doing uh, full length for the photo periods and then we're doing half autoflowers. So there'll be a staggered cycle of autoflowers in, in there. And hopefully we can get multiple runs of the autos. So I ordered Mandalorian genetics, um, full duplex auto a AFN on Instagram. I ordered all of his autoflowers. So we're gonna run a full run of his seeds and then um, see how that does. And then hopefully run another set of autoflowers while the photos are still going. Are those all feminized, those autoflowers? His are rags. Oh, what yeah. Can be. Yep, yep. <laughs> But I've heard a lot of good, and I've seen a lot of good pictures on Instagram of the anvil. That's one of his that uh, I've heard him talk about, and uh, it's purple, and it looks like it stacks really good. So one of those ones that even some of the leaves you'll get, the darker, like even the leaves themselves start turning almost black. It looked like on some of his phenos or some of his other stuff that he's breeding too. So it looks like that's kind of what he's breeding for, so. I like that kind yeah, of I'm stuff. I'm excited. I've got the, the anvil is coming and um, several of the other, some of the cup winning ones that he's got. Um, I'm excited to run them all. I've ran some other autos and been really impressed with that stuff like Mephisto and, and whatnot. So if it doesn't go the way I'm hoping, I'll definitely um, look to swim towards some other stuff, but I'm excited. Speaking of that, yeah, I guess this question would be a lot better when we have somebody that actually knows a lot more about autos, but from anybody else's experience, is it possible to start like a seed in a simple um, like starters plug, like with some cocoa and stuff, or is it going to root bound too fast and hormonally mess it up? Does anybody know about that? So what I do is I start them all in plugs. I start them all in like root riots or whatever, but as soon as the seeds popped, you can put it in whatever media and then just, you know, just leave it after that. Yeah, it's That's basically a three-day process doing that. when you use the root riots uh, to pop a seed. Like, you don't leave them in there very long. As soon as they get up there, you show the true leaf. It needs to get put in a medium. So, I actually, I'm going to go – I'm not planting them with my regular cannabis plants. They're not going – I do everything outdoor completely different than I do indoor. I don't. I usually don't do anything in paper towels. I plant my cannabis seeds the exact same way I plant all my vegetable seeds, and I put them all in 72 – cell starters you know I, I actually have them divided up into like six cells and things like that but that's how i do my canvas seed so i'm curious if i'm able to do it that way not in like because normally i would i would like wait until i saw a taproot or something and then put it in like a half gallon pot or something like that but that's not really the plan for my out <clears throat> for my outdoor at all it's going into the ground so and it's not going into the ground for at least a couple more weeks but i want to get them sprouted and planted you know in those seed cells yeah you'd be fine <clears throat> a couple weeks really and then they can go into the ground just watch the moisture like, you know you're gonna have to be more on top of the moisture a little bit in, in those plugs than you and they're not one by ones they're more like two by two they're they're actually oh. a little bit bigger yeah they're a little bit bigger it's more like a 48 to a 10 48 cells to a 10 by 20 uh if you can figure out that size in your head they're a little bit bigger and that's for longevity because they're probably going to stay in the seed starters for a little bit longer. I'm going to give them some, uh, uh, what is it? Some compost and some cocoa and let them ride in there for a few more weeks. But yeah, that's my outdoor approach is I just do everything at once, just like my vegetables. That kind of keeps the time management and ease of everything a little manageable. Sorry to divert into the auto flowers, but that's all I kind of want. Stoned. No, it's okay. I know if you're anything like me, Red, you have like a trillion clones going in the in the springtime. Well, yeah, I'm. I already. I so I guess that's what I did this week. If if I want to know what I did in the garden, was I cleaned up my propagation room and I took all like the runts and everything. That's really what I'm going to grow outside. 
I'm going to use the sun and I'm going to use nature and things and bring them back to health instead of throwing them away or composting them. So I'm going, I went and I put those aside. They're going to stay in the grow room for a couple more weeks until I'm able to start leaving them outside overnight and things. I don't like taking plants in and out, um, taking them outside and then bringing them back inside too often. So I try to avoid that best I can. But anyways, uh, set those aside and the rest is all uh, going to go from seed. So yeah, that's kind of what I did is I did my planning. I started planning on what's going to go outside. That was a fun little propagation room. I have a blueberry quintessa that gets to go outside this year. And I am thinking about taking headlights outside and possibly a sour melon. Headlights so, would be crazy outside, I bet. I bet it would be too. I've got pictures on my Instagram. You got to scroll way back. But they're that's, as big as my arm. <laughs> and that's what made me think about it too. I was like, man, whoo, you know, and you didn't put them, you put them out basically at the beginning of June, rocked them and rolled them. And that's what you got. Holy shit. Yep, dug a hole. Those ones we just, oh, those ones were in pots um, that we sunk halfway down. So they were in 20 gallon pots. And uh, I think that's, I don't know, it's three or four bags of soil that I threw in there of M3. And then that was sunk halfway in the ground. So it was like a half raised bed. And I just gave it water. I think I gave it one or two waterings with recharge in it throughout the season. And then when it started flowering, I switched uh, to, uh, I think I gave it mammoth pea once or twice, but mostly it was just straight water all the time. And that was it. I was just thinking about hitting it with some of the down to earth stuff. You know what I mean? Maybe throw some kelp and some alfalfa meal and probably some booze blend or something like that. Some rice holes, yeah, whatever. I mean, Mix yeah. all that shit up, throw it in there. We'll see what happens. Something will come through. Yeah, you could do it all you want. We were in a pretty hot soil to begin with because it was a pig pen, so... We didn't really add much to it. Oh, the dank. Yeah. I sprinkled Badly a couple that bags of that blue blend. Go ahead, Abolish. Sorry, man. I say the sour melon won't finish outside for you, Scobo, unless you got a temperature controlled greenhouse where you can run a little longer. Bet. Thank you. So, I don't, that's good not to waste a clone on that then. Well, OG will finish outside. That's the only thing I really ever have finished other than a random, couple of random things over the years. That one always finishes. Bet you I'm going to put the sour melon in the greenhouse this year. Dude, it should get big as fuck. Sorry, right. I'm going to call you to trim it because I hate that fucking plant, dude. Bolish will definitely run right over it oh, and gladly yeah, trim it. Dude. I will trim for smoke all day on that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's over there knocking on the door. You know I'm calling all of you guys. Come, you know, whatever. Oh, trim parties are great, trim man. Party. We're not, we got, we'll have the smoker set up. Got a lo- ooh, I, that sounds even better. I was gonna say, got a love trim party, and they're talking about a smoker setup. There we go. We found a food you can eat, Red. Put some ribs on oh, for yeah. him. Smoke food. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm down. I'll eat meat. All right, all right. We're talking. Have a- beer nuts. What we'll beer nuts too, Red? Beer nuts. Corn nuts. I'll bring. The- I'll bring- yeah. Bring the snacks. <laughs> the first time Red showed up to trim with us, he brought. Nuts and a nutcracker. Dude, no, the first time they read, it was you read an old man, and you were sending us videos and shit of how fucking stoned he was, and it was just so damn funny, man. Oh, yeah, the first time that we sat and trimmed. Oh, yeah, that was a, that was a good day. Shout out old man Herman Hash for that one. Is that the day you tried to pass me the scissors? I tried it. to pass you the scissors. Yep, makes so high, makes pass you the scissors. Smoking on that banana hammock or whatever the hell that stuff was called. Banana. Blue, Blue banana, banana, dude. Don't ever say smoking on the banana hammock again. Just don't say Oh, my it. God. Yeah, I guess that really didn't come out right, did it? That was terrible. Oh, I, thought, man. Like, I, was, I was thinking of the joke from the Wait, banana man. hammock, but I didn't put the Abolish, key together it. with the smoking. <laughs> yeah, you're right there. Take that's it down. A, Destroy that's a joke it. I shouldn't repeat, huh? Man, that's brutal. That's the clip of the night. Sorry about that one. You ain't good night, folks. I can't believe that sound bites out there now. Terrible. Just in time for the one year, Red. Nice job. Beautiful. Late edits. Late edits. Thank you for joining us, Red. A lot of fun with that one. This is Death Star. I'm telling you, I'm afraid to put this sucker outside, man. It's going to get like 22 feet tall. It's going to be. Call me. I'm going to put the Death Star in there, too. Yeah. I'm Someone in the grow off chat stuff. challenged me. They said they had six foot tall plants they wanted to put in the greenhouse. Ooh. See if we could hit the ceiling. And tie them down, man. 
That's a lot of scroggin. I mean, what if we just let him hit the ceiling? Uh, that's then that's like the Mendo Dope Boys, you know, the 14 foot monsters. Well, then you're going to have a lot of work cleaning out the middles every single day. Oh, yeah. I already, that's the, uh, the, the skinny dude. Right. So, you know, you're the one crawling through there for that shit. I'm just saying, if you have oh. the, if you have the width, fucking use it, you know, fill your space just like you oh, would yeah. fill your space inside, fill it outside too. And that's going to be to your benefit. If you can work and not be on a ladder, not wearing drywall fucking elevators or whatever they call those things, <laughs> stilts, then uh, you're just going to be all the all that much faster. When you're on a ladder reaching and shit, you're just going to break your back down. The game. next time that I see a motherfucker wearing some stilts, you know I'm going to call them drywall elevators and shout you out in my mind, Spartan. That would be tough in all that sand, too. Can you imagine trying to wear stilts on the sand? And Ooh, boy. You put like uh, like uh, snowshoes on it, <laughs> spread it out. So yeah, there you go. Around. Oh, dude, that's so genius. Well, we have that's they're genius. landscaping tiles, so they're made to go on that stuff, and they spread out your weight. Oh, you that's a those stable part. Okay, cool. Yet. How tall is it? You said sixteen feet. Yeah. Yeah, that that could. It gives a lot of headspace for all the hot air, though. I was thinking, you know, I think that that yeah, would be a really be awesome. big benefit for us. So speaking of that, are you going to be rolling up the sides or, or are you ventilating both? Uh, Actively your... ventilating. There's, there's two 30-inch uh, intakes and then a 24-inch exhaust fan. And if that's not big enough, we're going to get a bigger fan but or add one or whatever. But Was that part of the kit? Yeah, so it's got motorized um, temperature-controlled, like, you know, ventilation. So I saw a video that I thought was badass. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but they had like what appeared to be like a regular 12 inch can fan at the soil level pointing over the soil. But instead of just being a bare can fan, it was attached to one of those big wind socks with the holes in it. So it was just like a tube that would blow air. There was the only the holes were only on the going up. So it was a tube that laid over the soil filled with air that was blowing air straight up underneath the canopy. I thought that was That's dope genius. as shit. I got an extra like fan myself. Too. I just it remember when cool. I saw that, I locked it away and I said, I got to tell a sequence about that because I thought that was cool as fuck. It was in a greenhouse. Something That's else I'm really... Dead That's spots. a good idea, by the way, yeah. And we got to get circulating fans and we talked about that and all that stuff too. I don't want to sound like I've missed something, but there's like a million things on our list that's been ordered and you know all of that stuff. But something that's cool to bring up is the, um, I bought the explosive ember peppers to house uh, banker, to be banker plants for sports guy mites. So I'm really, really excited. And then actually uh, Matthew Gates, Xenthanol, Sync Angel. I can't remember which account is his Instagram name. I think it's Sync Angel. He just shared stuff uh, about banker plants and sports gamites. So it was pretty cool that I bought the stuff just a few days before that. And uh, now on his YouTube page, he's showing that that's the best plant. And what it does is the mites will live on the pollen from the plants when they don't have any prey to eat. And then when they do have prey, you can, uh, I've heard that it's kind of difficult to get the, the mites to go towards the prey. But I, I feel like if you have, I have 50 plants or 50 seeds, you should be able to shake them on there or something. I'll figure it out. But um that the plants will keep the mites alive so you don't have to buy them over and over again so that should save a lot of money well and couldn't you do some kind of companion planting where you spaced them out along the way so that you could basically you do, have a little nest but the peppers are going to be like three feet tall or something they're going to be pretty small and they got to be very very close so i feel like they'll probably get you know shaded out um one interesting thing about that pepper plant specifically is is that the it's such a good food source that they'll actually start breeding, which is what is really nice. So not only are you keeping them alive, but you're actively breeding a population after that. So like you said, saving you money, but of course you're going to have to get that initial application, you know, to get right. them out of the plants. I would apply at least one sachet or whatever to your peppers too. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure how you like coax them off your peppers to go, searching out maybe yeah, if i like, feel like if i've got all the peppers in like some one gallon grow bags or some three gallons i can just pick them up and just 
shake them shake shake oh, yeah shake. or just maybe a fan you know put a fucking oscillating yeah. fan in front of them for an hour <laughs> <laughs> just fucking blow the shit off the plants i'm really excited to try it though i mean that's something that i've been really interested in on the organic side i mean all the all the pesticides i've ever used for that organic way but when i first heard about that uh like a, a year plus ago i was like if i ever grow in a greenhouse i'm doing that so i'm doing it now that's cool, dude. It's cool. I'm excited for you. I'm like living through you. <laughs> yeah. And, and like I said, you'll get to help uh, for the shittiest part. <laughs> I want to shout great. out De Debbie Daly, but what a great compliment. She says, I'm new here, but I can tell you right now, I trust that Spartan grown dude. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's a beard, dude. So those, uh, your pepper plants, are you going to have them like to where they're ever going to make any kind of contact with the, the cannabis plants at all? Like, say if you went a little lazy on your lowers towards the sides of those pepper plants and let them do, you know, some bridging contact, you let the leaves hit those uh, pepper plants, that might be an easy way to get them to transfer. I'm positive them. they will, you know, because you're in a greenhouse and like shit's going to get blown up over a day, even though grow real fast. Um and it's hard to do all of the work all the time and keep everything clean and all that stuff. And maybe it is a good, you know, thing to do. Um, but you definitely have, they have to be in such close contact that they actually like physically touch. I know that. So that's the main limitation. So you're going to be in pots, right? These pepper plants are you. Yeah. Like, just put them on a rolling cart. Yeah. Then you can roll them down, down an aisle. Let so them like brush. AM. Just let them brush their leaves across as they roll them down the aisle once a month i plan something. to have a lot of them you know like 20 of these plants around or you know more or whatever <laughs> i don't have a plant count limit on explosive ember pepper plants so that's wonderful man <laughs> yeah. but see but this kind of logistics is what you really don't think about i know it sounds bad but this kind of logistics is not the things that you think about when you're thinking about next year i want a greenhouse and it's all the things and all the notes and all the preparatory steps that have been taken to get him to this point right now where he's able to get this thing up and running so that he hits it this year instead of putting it off for another season. So good work. Well, it's cool to just have a few things that you have on a list and you go, well, if I ever get the chance, like if I ever get the chance to set up a room the size of what they have at Mitt and Canico, I've got some things I would do. You know what I'm I mean? Getting those rolling then, tables first thing. You know, so the, that's one of those things for me was getting these these plants and trying this thing. So I'm really really excited about it. So Miss uh, Miss D's nose was asking why rubbing would make a difference. Think of it like this: like if you had your the companion plant way over in say even like your four by four bed. The space between that plant on the edge and your cannabis plant in the middle is huge for that insect. Now, let alone all the other life that's on its way to your cannabis plant that it probably knows about. It, it I just find that my mites and stuff like that, they don't, they, they never, they don't like to trans, or they don't like to move very far unless you force them. Yeah, there's that. And then there's the other part of everything, right? You just plan for the worst case scenario. So just plan for all of your things to be like, these pepper plants are really sweet. It's nice and humid here and there's tons of food. Why am I going to go fuck off over there? And, you know, so just plan for them to not care and uh, have a solution if they don't care. Well, I think that the pepper plants are going to go through cycles just like every other plant. So there's going to be a point where they're not producing pollen. So at that point, the mites are going to have to fucking start looking. <laughs> it's true. I might have to cycle them. Yeah. But the whole thing is, is that nobody just uses predatory mites as their one and only shot silver bullet IPM, especially when it comes to a greenhouse anyway. So this is just one yeah. arrow in your quiver as a, a greenhouse grower. And you got to remember, and it's it's still, even in a hoop house, it's still kind of an outdoor situation and how most mites kind of travel and get, and get brought to other crops in outdoor situations is through the air. They're such tiny little things. They're, they're flying around. They're not flying, but they're floating i guess you say in the air currents yeah. and they just get deposited on shit and so uh you know same thing's going to happen off of these pepper plants you know just to i'm sure he's going to have some kind of air currents going through there i would hope and it's, it's going to carry some of them off and get them dispersed through the crop i mean that's going to be the only other like giant mono crop in there right. it's going to land on something green probably hopefully and with this quantity of plants you have to plan for 
uh, pests and you have to plan for um, those sort of issues because they will happen in some part of, you know, the thing, there's going to be some thrips or some mites or something somewhere. So, you know, don't be too proud to be like, okay, I might get thrips somewhere and uh, definitely have a plan for that. I would um, recommend some, someone brought it up in chat and reminded me, but marigolds are uh, very awesome outside. You'd be surprised at, at how many things they actually keep away. They keep away um, the slugs, uh, which uh, I had ripped out one marigold and all of a sudden I had a slug problem, you know, nowhere else in the beds where there were marigolds where, where there's slugs. Um, there's weird things outside here in Michigan. So um, don't be afraid to just plant some marigolds around because they are, I mean, they're, they're just some orange little flowers. They, they, they have a good smell uh, and uh, that smell deters all that shitty stuff that you don't really want around. So uh, yeah, I highly, highly recommend some marigolds. Like a, a lot of farms, crop? a well, lot of well. farms will actually plant like in between hoop houses, they'll plant pastures of marigolds um, would, to keep it would be a great cover crop because they can get pretty significant like we've had some like marigold bushes going on oh like, yeah you know yeah two feet plus kind of thing and really wide so so grow them as their own thing yeah like probably throw them in a pot or something and you know intersperse them or whatever or their roots cool. are pretty shallow um but they get like a, a prolific and they just go everywhere yeah. uh, um they do say though that the roots of the marigold if established for longer than six months is very healthy for the soil um but um i've had marigolds um get rid of mint and if anybody's ever grown mint before they know that you should just grow it in a pot and never, ever, ever, ever put it on the ground or in a bed or anything or where it, it will just take over. Um, but if you put marigolds near it, for some, from my experience, I've had them just kill the mint. The mint was just suffocating. It was the weirdest thing. So um, would I grow it as a cover crop? Probably not. Uh, only marigolds but you know you could throw them in here and there but i mean just having them in a small pot somewhere near your pot you know, your plants would also work i will try it i know that marigold seeds are everywhere so it's something that won't hurt i mean when growing I growing up our garden every single year we just did rows of marigold marigolds on the border so <clears throat> you're creating a wall with that terpenes i guess i guess the aromatics that it releases and so yeah just kind of creating like a physical wall That's there's a lot of plants you can do too on top of just marigolds like rosemary um uh, catnip uh sage uh uh, rosemary has really, really uh, strong smells. So that's a great plant to put around. Um, but just, just herbs in general, um, you know, grow the things that if you're growing them at home, if this is a home thing that you're doing, uh, even, or a business, you know, you can grow them as a cover crop and also eat them. So it's great. Yeah. I like doing, uh, I was trying, I really wanted to find an, an edible pepper that was you know, really, really good. It would work for this purpose. And I couldn't, you know, for the same ideas, I would like to multi-purpose the stuff. And sadly you can't with the peppers, but um, like if you can with herbs, I would rather use herbs than marigolds, for example, you know, but. Um, well, there's got a lot of good examples in chat too with herbs. You could do rosemary, you could do mints, you could do. Uh, right. And then they have dual purpose. And I like that. Right. Lemongrass was my big one that I liked. Lemongrass. I would not eliminate the marigolds out of the equation because he was saying, I did. He was saying and he regretted it. it. He repurposed but not eliminated. Well, at the same time, marigolds that we weren't mentioned is is that you know it's a pollinate. You know you're gonna find bees. Bees are attracted to that. They're gonna. That's another food for the bees too. So I don't know if bees specifically are gonna help a cannabis plant per se, but all your other plants is definitely your your flowering peppers for sure. It's gonna help. Well, if they attract like predatory bees or wasps or things that those will help because those will help devour your aphids and devour your mites and stuff if anything anything to get rid of the, the freaking slugs here in michigan I, i've never experienced slugs before but they're yeah, horrific this was the first year that i've had to mess with slugs and i noticed them on my uh, outdoor beds on the outside uh, crawling around so i just went and weed whipped all the 
grass to tall grass down all the way to the fucking dirt and uh that got rid of them and well for now yeah <laughs> for now i gear they are they're terrible uh beer works. We have nightmares tonight yeah beer works but then like they made I, we had this little pool that i made with like beer in it and they attract them and then they drowned you know it's probably <laughs> it's probably not the nice got us I got a stoner thing. What if you used Epsom salt? Then you could get the companion uh, benefits of that as well. Maybe the salt would keep there it away. The salts actually don't work as well as you think, especially with the adults who are the ones you want to get rid of. Um, there are there are nematodes, I believe, that you can get for the babies in the soil, but um, I was just those adults gonna are suggest huge. Suggest nematodes. I was going to say, I think that there is nematodes. Nematode, yeah. She said Ninja nematode, toads? and I followed it up with it, so I, I totally went with it. I was like, I like that. But yeah. Those guys, that I, I don't know if it's the SF, which little guys work with it. But go ahead, keep talking. I like where you're going. Um, there's other things. I found that slugs are the worst thing that I have in my garden. Like I've never had anything worse. Uh, maybe a bunny digging a hole in the spring, but I can get you know that's easy. Throw some cayenne pepper on the soil, but um, the these slugs like they ate all of my all of my plants. Uh, for the fall so I was going to have you know the, the winter crops some, some lettuce and some carrots and stuff everything was was devoured um, those slugs got like four inches long and they were just having fun in the beer pool eventually they were just hanging out like it was a swimming pool it was it, w- it was well, no, actually it's, horrible it's because it rained and it watered down the beer so it wasn't like, well, effective I mean, enough to- <laughs> swimming pool uh you do have to you can pick them out a lot of people can like take a board they'll put a board and turn it upside down and like have them attract there and then like move them away um beer works but the epsom salts don't work very very well and um i can't say this word diet diatomaceous earth earth, um just washes in after you put it down so it it might work um they do have copper fences but like actually you can have like little battery operated copper electric zappers zappers um and i've heard bricks so we'll see this year what works um i'm not going to get the copper because like well we're in lockdown and i don't really feel like spending the extra money on that kind of right now so um some so maybe some stones or something like that but yeah fuck the slugs there's a beer grotto this year this yeah. is cool you guys brought up the slugs because I was actually just talking with this about this with my mom and it's it's always an ongoing battle every year for her every year the, the war of the slugs and I was just sitting there thinking uh, I, I, I told her I was like why don't you try my rice oil cover crops that I use for my cannabis plants because there's no way that could be friendly for them to crawl around on it would end up stabbing them and getting caught in their slime and that stuff is so cheap and you can lay it on thick you could you could probably yeah. use that. The that's American- dry too. That's that's what you want. You just want to get something that's going to dry out, and that's that'll do it, I think. Yeah, probably they have, um, they tend to has- like beds with a lot of mulch and like uh, compost in them because it stays moist. So the more shit you end up mulching over the top, the more moisture you hold in, and the more slugs you'll end up having. I really do recommend that those marigolds. Though I've not found anything else to date that has done kept them at bay more than a giant marigold bush in my bed uh there's just nothing uh, that you could possibly use eggshells actually um that if you you know just crunch them up it's salt too but i mean i've never had real problems i've never had to get this was the first year i've seen them even i have videos on my other account my, my snow kitten account that um they're they're just hanging out having sex you know having <laughs> babies all over the place there's there's like 20 of them and when i went to go get get rid of them they they move quicker than you think i mean it's a slug fest is what you're saying <laughs> it was they're they were, they were having a pool party in the <laughs> trap with the beer and it's out. funny you bring it up today because i actually saw a video that this guy was he was actually it, it had nothing to do with slugs it was actually a video on eggshells and uh, myths on using eggshells as compost and things like that. And one of the myths was using uh, uh, that he talked about slugs briefly and he was talking about how slugs can crawl over like ra- it, he didn't say razor blades but I recalled like another documentary or video that I had seen 
where slugs were like crawling over razor blades it was like a study basically that slime that they produce it like creates like this i don't know if it's like a teflon or a silicone effect underneath them that allows them to basically glide over anything sharp so like you guys are talking about you basically have to dry them out basically he was arguing the video that i saw was he was arguing that uh the eggshells won't cut up the uh won't deter slugs because it won't cut them up there's they'll crawl over them and crawl back over them there's evidence or whatever if i'm doing that um but what i remember from that video was yeah that they will crawl over stuff that's sharp and what he was also suggesting was for slugs drying them out diatomaceous earth and i guess if you can use salt or something like that try it but he's like rice holes sound like they might work then yeah i'm thinking about drying them out for rice holes yeah or um, not for poking them but yeah I mean, as eventually as... right because they're gonna dry them out and then stab them too as far as a, a, a biological control, I've got my little cheat sheet from the Regen Conference from Suzanne Winray Evans. She didn't have slugs on there specifically, but the closest thing is a caterpillar, which I assume is pretty damn close. And it's recommended Bacillus thuringiensis K. So not the stuff we're using, which is the I Israeli, which is what we use for like fungus gnats or something. Find something with a K. And it's going to be something, you know, for caterpillar control is probably going to be how it's advertised. But I would try that. BTK. Chris in the chat said to try that for slugs as well. I'm still on board with the nematodes. And that's the only thing on there. It doesn't have the ninja toads. It says the other thing is is a tri trigramma SP. I don't don't really know what that is. Some kind of a fungus or something. There's also you could actually put a bat house. I would love to do this because we do have bats around here. But um, you can put a bat house nearby and they will eat the slugs apparently. And also if you do attract certain birds, um, we have birds everywhere. So they, they're not doing anything. Um, is it, they're either just not, they're not catching it. Or Lazy them. bums. <laughs> Eating just, up all my food except the stuff I want you to get. Jesus. Well, but bats are like uh, nocturnal and that is also when the slugs are out. So I would think that they would make a better pair uh predator prey that's why i love theory crafting on these panels because we have a lot of bats where she has the slug problem so that would be awesome to set up that why well, bats eat ground insects i love the idea of co-planting and having bird houses and bat houses and bee houses and all that stuff because that's all beneficial hey, i don't want no fucking bats flying around my place fuck that I'm just like, yeah, down. they're already flying. Yeah, I just want you ever woken up to a bat in your house? No, but I don't want a bat in my house. I've seen it. I've done it, dude. I've done it, dude. Dude, I've laughed into my side for watching it on movies. I don't want that to be. It's exactly like the movies, dude. Fucking bats flying around. You're like, you know, screaming and being a pussy. Go and grab the fish. Don't get in my hand. I don't have exactly don't like have that, dude. Nah, man. I, I I'm an organic guy, but fuck bats flying around, man. I don't want this. I see the bats flying around. I'm going in the fucking house, man. Just me the heat. I don't want to touch it because then I know I got to get a bunch of needles poked. Yeah, then you got all this one, one little shot. bat. Ah, ah, ah. Nah, the Ooh. flying, flying Ooh, mice. Ooh, little I'm bat. Done, I'm done. I'll let them have the air, man. Because which I'm not... John Candy movie was it? The Great Outdoors, where they had yeah, the Great Outdoors. That? That's exactly the movie I was thinking of when I was saying that. So great, dude. fucking awesome. So great. We've been Matt's got a bad rap today. right now. <laughs> and with that, we have about ten minutes left. We've cruised through another one, guys. Does anyone want to talk about anything else before we do our sign offs and stuff? I'm gonna pack another bowl while we figure this out. I have a super quick question. So I just got done building two huge garden beds in my backyard. And um, I just used a bunch of old lumber that I got for free. But when I was like adjusting one of the boards, I noticed that there was like a lot of ants that had already made their way in between them or like checking that out. Are ants like problematic in outdoor gardening? And if so, what are ways I can get rid of them? So the only thing I would worry about with ants is um, that they're the ones that start farming those fucking aphids. So what I mean by that is, is if you get aphids, they actually take care of aphids. They'll defend them. They farm them because they shit out honeydew and the ants like to eat it. So 
so yeah so the ants were problematic in that way but otherwise they're you know causing some aeration and of the soil and they're you know helping decompose shit as they go around so <clears throat> i generally don't think it's a huge issue unless i see them completely swarming close to my you know vegetables or something i don't really like them around my food crops yeah, I was just going to say, I'm like, uh, most of my beds are outside are all food. Um, I, I try to get r rid of them. And, and to do so, you just att attract them with something they like, like sugar. So put a pile of sugar on something and let them come to it and then get rid of them. Yeah, they don't pretty like dumb, cinnamon. but smart at the same time. So. I think it's cinnamon that they don't like. And I, I think, again, there's and a couple of other. Too. Yeah, there's a couple other like co-plants co you can put. Cayenne, cayenne pepper plants is one of them, I think you can put out there no you can literally uh, just take some cayenne pepper in your kitchen and just sprinkle a tiny bit um and that'll actually detract bunnies too and some other things that take your stuff i've tried yeah. cinnamon too on the ants and it fucks them up i've done it right up right in the cracks of my garage floor and the ants were coming up and i just dumped cinnamon and yeah they yeah. did not like that shit yeah, you like catch cinnamon. a quick glimpse of any of my tents in the video on the very outside on the bottom you'll notice all of them are stained red that's because i coat the bottom of my tents with uh cinnamon regularly to make sure i don't get ants in there you don't want ants in the grow room because they will bring the bugs they transport the bugs in for you yeah, like that aphid thing where they farm the aphids and then don't aphids not farm necessarily farm, but don't they bring in uh, mites and move? They create portability for mites, at least. I know that. Dude, mites can come in farm. everything. I fucking hate mites, man. I've seen so many pictures of yep. on fucking fungus gnats. I'm like, what the fuck? They're little marines jumping off these fucking fungus gnats on your plants. I shouldn't even have brought it up. I'm going to knock on some, find some wood to knock on because I just cut the grass off. Now I'm going to itch for the rest of the night, Red. Yeah, dude, I know. Shouldn't even have t said that, that M word. It's protect the foods. Yeah, dude. You got half the chat problem. itching right now, too. I know, man. Well, dude, ants are something that I deal with all the time. I think I brought that up of many, many weeks ago. I plug holes in my floors like all the time. Uh, just a couple cracks, you know. Uh, some stuff that works great is like self leveling cement. Things like that work really good. But you know, in the midst of it, sometimes you just got to use some good old silicone or caulk, and that helps. That works sometimes. But I don't like putting things that are gonna like off gas in my sealed room. So I stay. You know, if I don't know what the chemical is on the packet that you have to like open up and it's going to deter the ants, I don't like putting that in my room. So you have like a syllable limit. Like if it's 10 syllables or less, I'll use it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah I need to, I need to have something like that. It's like, I just want to know what it is sometimes, man. No, because nah, you got to give up on that and get, set up a, a syllable limit. I need to have I know, a syllable limit. A nice round number. Definitely to terror attract them away like Kanakin was saying because ants are one of the most smartest insects out there like they beat the shit out of all kinds of insects that are way bigger than them they build elaborate colonies they farm like they do husbandry like they, they like Spartan was talking about with the damn aphids like that's a smart bug so I've heard that ladybugs will actually do that too, though. They'll keep like a small colony of um, aphids alive to like feed on. I mean, like they know not to eat everything because then they have no more food. So they'll actually kind of like farm their own food also. So ladybugs aren't a great thing to use for like pest control. I mean, they're fun to watch, crawl around and shit and stuff. And like, it's cool when they lay bugs, but I don't think that they're like a super effective IPM. They're so slow. Somebody just They're did so a slow. podcast. I think it was, it might have been Tad Hussey at the Kiss, what is it? Uh, Kiss podcast. I don't know, cannabis cultivation podcast he has. Anyhow, he's a, he was like sh basically shitting on the whole, uh, uh, not him, his guest was the uh, ladybug thing because they're not sustainably harvested. They're harvested like in California and then we're using them here in Michigan and obviously they're not even the right species for this environment kind of a thing. So they, they're effective for about a day or two and then they start dying off or so there's a lot of, is, a lot of bad thing, things about that. 
the thing is with them too, they don't really eat that many uh, like mites and stuff like that. And then a lot of times, like if you're using them in your grow room, they'll crawl up into your buds and stuff and die in there. And then you'll get bud rot and shit from them. So they cause more problems than they really solve, to be honest. Can they be in, can they turn invasive similar to like Japanese beetles? Like, I mean, Japanese beetles, aren't they pretty much the same, like a real, real similar species of beetle? I feel I like know. they're red with little black lot. spots also. Don't they I, look similar? I think they're similar looking and everything, but I don't know that, uh, um, you know, they have the same mechanisms that make them become invasive or whatever, at least in this climate. Yeah. Because, okay. I mean, I, I never really have been concerned about them, but I just know that, that the beetle itself is the invasive, you know, the Japanese beetle is invasive. I kind of frowned upon some areas and i know we've had some issues certain seasons i remember like many years ago i don't know if it was 15 20 years ago but we had a i mean they were crazy one year you're getting bit left and right by them i the those beetles are so gross <laughs> i think it was about 15 years ago um the, when i was going to college the doors would be covered in the beetles so to enter the buildings we would we would have to go in and we would all be picking beetles off of strangers in the elevators like just trying to get these bugs off of us just so we could go to class and not you know not miss or get in trouble or something you're not like helping that. with the itching yeah. <laughs> i'm sitting here just trying not to trying to be cool and nonchalant about it but everybody's yeah, got to go to bed after this that's another thing about those uh lady beetles or whatever when you see them at that, that's their adult stage. They're not really eating as many. They're really effective right before that. They're, they're called the something lions, but there's basically, if you picture a ladybug without its shell is what it looks like. <laughs> it looks like a little alligator kind of, but uh, then they're eating the fuck out of bugs. They're like super hungry because they got to, you know, change to their final form. But once they're there, they're just kind of, you know, eating to survive and to, to mate at that point. And, so when you get ladybugs that are in the adult form already, you're already kind of wasted your money. Unless you can somehow get them to breed and, and start, you know, repopulating, then I guess maybe it's worth it. But then you're sitting there soaking a sponge with sugar water and hoping that they have can go back now, to that every single day. Now I'm a bug breeder when I wanted to be a bud breeder. We, we, we drifted <laughs> off of the alphabet a little bit here. Yeah, I'm just saying there's ways to do it, but it's, it's really, I think, for all those reasons, just don't fuck with the lady ladybugs, man. I don't think it's worth it. I can't. I can't. There's not one person that I've helped in the past that went the lady pro route that that solved a problem or helped them. Like, just don't get them. There's way better bugs out there. I like growing. I'm oh, sorry. I gotta bump that up a little bit. I like growing like the rosemary and the dill and the things that are gonna bring in the bees and stuff. I like I like bees, man. It's, I love seeing bees out there. I know that there's pollination going on, and they need to eat something, you know. I'm getting so many bees in my yard this year. It's awesome. The they have those little like mason bee boxes that you can build, where I think it's basically just like paper straws inside a little box, and those are supposed to be really good for pollination. Like the one time I got to go to a garden store this year, I saw those everywhere. So that's a thing that I might look into try to like build those on my actually- own. Those are actually super bad. They they rip their wings and shit trying to go in those. Oh really? Good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of people think they're doing a good thing, but uh, unless it's made a certain way, that they, they when they go through there, it rips their fucking wings up and it fucks them up more and helps them. I found um, catnip really attracts the bees. Uh, like re- there'll be baby bees all over that thing, um, and then there's bees out, you know pollinating yeah. everything you guys live a dangerous fucking life with a bunch of fucking cougars in the house growing catnip it's fucking amazing yeah. <laughs> he, he likes weed more though actually like when i bring weed up he's to dry he he almost attacks me for it so. <laughs> that's fucking I awesome i wouldn't want to get attacked by that cat <laughs> all right guys we're there we gotta roll into our final shout outs this is another cool show. Chat was laughing along with us a lot in this one. I think we really had fun. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Spartan, where can everyone find you, bro? Uh, 
Everybody can find me on Instagram at Spartan Grown or all over YouTube at uh, Mr. Bros Grow Show, Frugal Force, uh, Cheap Home Grow Podcast, GML Show, Once in a Great While, if I Can Stay Up Late, Eagle, Eagle Show. You might see me there, but that's too late for me usually. <laughs> I make you a farmer's only profile. Will you use it? Uh, probably no. That's I. Wh- when am I gonna get the time for that shit, dude? I just told you all these fucking shows I'm on. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. Thank you, Red. Where can everyone find you, bro? Instagram at Red Setter Farm. Frugal Force on Saturday nights. Uh, most of the time, I apologize. Every so often, I am out at my farm a little late and I can't make it. But anyways, Monday nights at the late sesh and. Cheers, everybody. Shout out at my no-till guy and can of kitten for joining us. It was awesome such tonight. Shout out to the joints got me all bumbly uh, chat and all the whole cannabis community. Cheers, everybody. Peace out. Rock and roll. Love you all. Thanks, Red. Thank you. Uh, can of Kate, where can everyone find you? Um, on Instagram at the can of Kate or here on Sunday nights or on whatever day of the week we end up dropping weekly updates for my new little girl tent. Thank you guys for hanging out tonight. Thank you. Abolished Farms in Miss C. Abolished Farms, you can find me on IG and YouTube and wherever you see MBGS Productions. You guys can catch me on Instagram at Miss Cantaloupe. Um, Make sure to follow along in uh, be following along the grow off, follow the hashtag, see what's going on. Uh, shout out again to GB Farms, congratulations. And you guys are all doing a great job. Like everyone's plants are kicking butt. Um, so shout out 2020, there's some really good genetics we've got going on. And may the frugal force be with you. Yeah, that's been a hell of an experience so far. Skillbo, do you have anything you'd like to say before our guests here? I just want to say that it's been fun as always, and it's a good sprinkling of some laughs and a lot of really, really good information. Thanks to our guests that dropped through today. Thank you, Am I No Till Guy and Can of Kitten. And of course, Spartan Grown keeps us on the level and abolished us as well with the other science drops. People tolerate me a little better that way when there's some intelligence going on as well. So thanks. You can find me on Instagram. I'm Scobo One. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us. And make sure you check out the late sesh tomorrow night at 11. I'm new here, but I'd hang out with that Spartan grown guy. And then uh, last but not least, am I no-to guy in Canakit? And thank you guys for joining us. Working thanks for having us. Um, it's been great. Uh, it's great seeing everybody's faces, especially when we're just like locked up in our houses and don't see anybody like ever. So um, it's really been wonderful getting high with all of you guys and, and everybody in uh, the chat. Uh, sorry, I can't keep up with it as much as I'd like. It's hard to do both. But um, I'm you can find me at uh, Candy Kitten on IG and and you can find me on and my notes like I on uh, Instagram. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks for having us on and thanks everybody for watching. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the social interaction is really good for all of us. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, chat, for joining us. Have a good night.